Hi, everybody. This is James Tierney from Tierney Education. Please be sure to subscribe if you haven't already, so that way you can know when I post new videos about economics concepts and also higher education information. I got this question from a student this morning in my inbox talking about perfect compliments. They wanted to talk about perfect complements and their indifference curve. So they say, how do I draw the indifference curve for a perfect complement? So let's talk about that a little bit here. First, let's make sure we understand what perfect complements are. Basically, you need a certain number per one of the other. So you need a certain number per one of the other. So there's always going to be a ratio of, for example, I might need three of x for every y. Um, in the real world, right, my real life type example, I always like to talk about left versus right shoes. And the thing is, every time I get one right shoe, I need one left shoe. If I have 15 right shoes but only one left shoe, my happiness is only with the one. And so what that means is when I'm looking at exactly what this utility function is, right, my utility of X and Y, if X, let's say, is left shoes and Y is right shoes, I guess we could write this as, uh, utility of L comma R, right? Left shoes and right shoes. It's just going to be the minimum of L, R, right? Or this would be the minimum of X, Y. And you'll see up top, you'll see a little card. I actually did a question where we found the optimal number. We maximized the number given a, a budget constraint. We're not going to do that here, but you can head on up uh, and you can click that if you want to go and check that out. Or at the end of this video, I'll make sure that one is linked. So by definition, a perfect complement, what we care about with perfect complements is that there's a certain number per one of the other. So like left and right shoes. So how do we draw an indifference curve? Well, let's just do a quick recap of what is an indifference curve. It's just a curve showing all possible combinations that give the same level of utility. Right? That gives you the same level of utility. I'm going to make this just a little smaller and move it over here because I do want to also just talk about what is the idea of utility. Utility is just my happiness, right? So it's just how happy am I getting. That's my overall happiness. It's my enjoyment. You can think of it as enjoyment. It's what I like. The economists, we have to kind of define everything. So now that we have the basic idea down for perfect complements, we know what it is. We know how we can represent that as our utility. We know what utility is. We have this indifference curve, and that's the question I got. What does this indifference curve look like? Let's scroll this whole thing up and look at that. So let's go ahead and draw just our basic xy plane. So if I have x on the horizontal axis and y on the vertical axis, the way that we are going to care about indifference curve for perfect complements, remember we want perfect complements. And let's just look at this idea of where x is equal to right shoes and y is equal to left shoes, okay? And what I know is I need a one-to-one -one ratio. Every time I have one right shoe and one left shoe, I get a certain amount of utility, right? This point right here gives me a certain amount of utility. Now, if I gain more and more right shoes, I don't get any more utility because I'm dependent on the one left shoe. So that's why we see a straight line going out like this. And of course, if I have one right shoe and I just get more and more left shoes, I get more and more left shoes, I am going to stay that same level of utility. 
So this right here gives me the same utility. Basically what this is telling me is that I am indifferent. Boom, there's my indifference curve. I'm indifferent between all of these combos, these combinations. Right, this point right here I just drew, this point right here, this point right here, this point right here. All of those I am indifferent to. That's why we call it an indifference curve. It gives us the same utility. What if we don't have a one-to-one, -one, right? So let's do this again. What if we don't have a one-to-one? -one? If I draw out my X and my Y, and if my, you, you know, if maybe I need three X for every one Y, so uh, I don't know, maybe I want three uh, sugars in my one cup of, of coffee. So that's telling me right here, X is my cup of coffee, right? And Y is going to be my sugars because it's saying that for every one cup of coffee, I multiply it by three, I get the amount of sugar that I have. So what's that gonna look like here on my indifference plane, right? Well, how am I gonna draw an indifference curve here? One of the many that we could draw. Let's go ahead and find that out. I like to start at the basic of if I have one cup of coffee, I know I need one, two, three scoops of sugar. And I know that it doesn't matter if I get more sugar, I'm not gonna put it in my coffee, and it doesn't matter if I have more cups of coffee, I need to have three. So this right here is going to be one of my indifference curves. What if I have a second cup of coffee? Well, if I have a second cup of coffee, I need not only three, I need four, five, six. I need six of these spoons of sugar. So now I see my indifference curve looking like here. This is my new indifference curve. Let's call this indifference curve prime. And as you know, right, you could just have a bunch of different indifference curves up here. If this was, you know, three and nine, and you just keep going up, you're going up. This is my overall plane of the indifference curves for this. So again, this is perfect complements. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you have any questions at all you'd like me to cover, please put them in the comments below. Let me know what your favorite example is for perfect compliments, and I'll see you in my next video.